five-time English champions. Yes! Five-time cup winners. Ah! And the worst team in the Premier League. Yes, I'm talking about Everton. Onana left to join Aston Villa and it looks like he left a sinking ship. I am under the water. Everton's season begins with losses against Brighton at home, Tottenham away, Bournemouth at home, finding themselves bottom of the league with minus eight goal difference after just three games. Everton had to deal with so many point deductions last season but still managed to survive. This time it might just not be enough. Sean Dyche is already under pressure. That's where we come in. Let's re-establish Everton as one of the greats. I'm aiming for five trophies in England and a Champions League win by the end of this rebuild. Here we go. So let's take a look at the team of Everton. Their latest lineup. This is Calvert-Lewin up top, McNeil and Diaye Harrison supporting him, Gueye and the new man from Aston Villa whose name I will never be able to pronounce next to him. Then we have Coleman, the legend of Everton, Tarkowski, Keane because Branthwaite was injured and Mikolenko in defense with Pickford in goal. But let me tell you something, Everton was leading 2-0 up until the 87th minute against Bournemouth at home and Bournemouth said, you know what, let me take those three points thank you very much three goals scored three points taken Everton in shambles so clearly this team isn't even good enough to beat like a squad like Bournemouth at home and that just shows me there's so much work to be done here at Everton like if you think about the history of this club it really hurts to see them struggling this much when I started watching Premier League football Everton was always like at least in like the ninth eighth seventh position and now it's a completely different story. So let's make sure we change the, the trend line of Everton. Let's make sure it doesn't go down anymore, but up. I've made a decision between two strikers. It was Beto or it was Calvert-Lewin. This man right here, Beto, had only scored three goals in 30 Premier League games last season. So for me, it's clear he has to go. And Calvert-Lewin obviously scored and assisted in the last game. So he is currently on decent form. Guaya, I'm letting go so that the lad from Aston Villa can get some playtime. And actually, for the first season, I'm not going to touch the squad. The only thing, the only players I will spend money on will be the ones that Everton actually loaned in. So Lindström, I will sign on a permanent deal. And whoever else has joined this team on a deal that is only a loan deal, I will sign on a permanent deal as well, just like Broja. So let's see how this goes. First season based on Everton's decisions only, basically. Let's see. Before we actually move on, let me just tell you that on my second channel, Johnny Sports 2, I have just started an Everton career mode, a serious episode to episode mayhem. Please go ahead and check it out. Johnny Sports 2 career mode series are back. We're building towards FC 25 and that channel is getting closer to 100k subscribers. So how did that first season go? Let me show you right here. Everton finished in the 12th position with 46 points, 11 points away from Bournemouth, Southampton and Ipswich who are going down at the top of the league table. We have the likes of Manchester City. Now, obviously, I didn't win any of the trophies. No Carabao Cup, no FA Cup, none of that. So don't expect anything special there, but expect an improved team. So Cavett Lewin, plus one. Not that great, but it's okay. Lindstrom up to a 79. I have seen this guy play for Eintracht Frankfurt. That one season where he was ridiculous. Honestly, if he can bring back that form, that type of Lindstrom, he would be huge for Everton. Trust me when I say that. Think of him like a Mateus Cunha type player, someone that just drives forward in a counter-attack. And I think that could be really big for Everton. Now, McNeil has gone up to an 80 rating. Harrison is now here forever, 77 rated. We have this man whose name I can't pronounce. How is it actually? Irog Bunam? Is that how you say it? Or is it Irweg Bunam? I would assume it's Irog Bunam. Anyways, Mangala, by the way, has completely taken over from Ghana. The man that is also loaned in into the club. 79 rated at this stage, 26 years old. That pairing seems to be working out really nicely. Patterson up to his 76. No more Coleman. He's down to his 71 and he's leaving to Turkey. That deal has already been signed. Branthwaite up to an 81. Tarkovsky 80. Mikolenko 80. Pickford 83. You can see we're going into the right direction. And most importantly, some of the players on the bench here like Broja, 
up to a 77. NDIA, 77. Issue is, a bunch of these guys have actually requested transfers because they have not been getting the playtime that they probably want. So a couple of deals have to be made moving forward. Neil Mopai playing for Brentford. In real life, he's loaned away to France. So next season, I'll sell him on and cash in on him. But Calvert-Lewin, this season, 18 goal contributions in 38 games. That's not bad at all. Not that bad at all. So, yes, Lindstrom, 12 and 7. Love that. That's the type of play I want to see from him. That player above me looks nothing like Lindstrom, by the way. <laughs> but uh, let's move ahead into Season 2, where we will start to have a proper impact on this Everton squad. I think Everton fans would be quite happy about finishing 12th this season. I would assume so. Now, though, my friends, let's see the players who have left. Yes, Ndiaye requested a transfer. Ghana did the same. Mopai had to leave because his tweets are not funny. Keane has left as well for 4.9 million and Holgate leaving the squad too. Now we are left with a budget of over 108 million pounds. Oh, I can soon do some damage with that. Concesao, a man that was picked up by Ajax, then loaned back to Porto, managed to get seven goals and seven assists in the past season and now joins Everton. Why? Because Harrison is not going to grow anymore. Based on his development plan, he's going to be stuck at that 77 for another like 60 weeks. So I thought it's time to bring in Concesao. This guy is a great dribbler, but also someone that can create some really good chances. So I wanted him to be part of this team. Plays on the right, but he is left footed, so he will be cutting in technical play style on him as he comes in he's 21 years old and i think it's an amazing signing for the squad and again it would be very easy to replace that man in the cdm position but you know what even though i struggle pronouncing your name i am not gonna give up on you buddy adilson angel abreu de almeida gomez that is the man we're bringing into the team i know you are thinking what <laughs> it is the man Angel Gomez. That's how you know him, or Angel Gomez, or whatever you want to call him. This is the man who is English. Now, he is coming into the team as a centre midfielder, and you might be wondering why. Well, let me tell you right now. Mangala, despite the amazing growth last season, is going to stagnate this season. He's not going to grow anymore. It's going to take him like 50-something weeks. So I decided, you know what? Let's go in and bring in an extremely talented player that also has an English passport, which is obviously always quite useful. You want to have as many English players in an English team as possible, even though the Premier League clubs don't necessarily do that themselves anymore. They are bringing in players from everywhere. But this man is coming in now with extremely well-balanced stats. Someone that can showcase the man next to him, the youngster. A couple of skills that he can learn from. And I've seen him play in France a couple of times already, and he is technically extremely gifted. He comes in with a finesse shot, incisive pass, technical flair, and trivella. If we get this guy to a high rating, well, we have gotten ourselves an incredible player. So in our second season, Everton is back to basically where they kind of belong to in the past. Eighth position with 60 points up there competing with some of, with some of the clubs that might be able to upset the big teams when they have direct matchups. We are 24 points away from our city rivals, Liverpool. And as we go into the squad, you realize that we have done a great job in building up this man right here. He's up to a 77 now, which I absolutely love. He, you know what, bro? Do I give you the cap? Nah, I can't, I can't go that far. Not yet. But uh, Lindstrom, 82. Broja, you see it? He has taken up here this position from Calvert-Lewin, who stopped growing. He's 81 rated, and he is playing. Lindstrom, obviously, very happy with that. Concesao as well. And then uh, Gomez up to an 82. McNeil, 82 rated. Mikolenko as well. Branthwaite, though, 85 rated at this stage. And I gotta be real. If we're being somewhat realistic in this one, in certain moments where we pick and choose to be realistic, I guess Branthwaite would be the one that I would have to sell on. And he's the one that the big clubs would want. He is genuinely an incredible talent. I've been watching him since PSV Eindhoven, and I think he's class. So Branthwaite, buddy, you could be going and this man right here could take over. O'Brien, who was purchased this year by Everton. And I believe they paid, paid the most amount for him, actually, in this transfer window, which was like 19.5 million euros. 
he could come in here and play alongside Tarkowski. That could easily happen. And then Tarkowski, obviously, being 32 years old, we could be bringing in a replacement for him with the Branthwaite money as well. So I'm kind of open to that. Let's go into the stats, though, as we uh, see who is doing best. There we go. Armando Broja, only 23 years old at this stage. 21 goals in the Premier League, or in this season, I should say. I'm very impressed. McNeil with 23 goal contributions. Harrison was stealing playtime from uh, Concesal. I had to switch him to become a left midfielder so that Concesal actually played the games in the end. Only managed to get a couple in, it seems. One and one for him, which is obviously not ideal. But those things we'll deal with as we move into the next season. I have just received two incredible offers from two Premier League clubs that want to give me one of their players plus money. First of all, Lenny Yoro being offered by Manchester United. It seems like they've already given up on the young lad. That would be some signing, honestly. Yoro is expected to be the next big thing when it comes to centre-backs in world football. I mean, Real Madrid was interested, so that is a big one for me. But going down one further, Julian Timber. Now, this guy is such a great ball-playing centre-back. Someone that can play centre-back, right-back, left-back, CDM. He can do anything, and he would be more of a finished product joining our team. Yoro, yes, bigger name and everything, but realistically speaking, would that really ever happen? I don't think so. Yoro is going to stay at United, so I am going to be accepting the offer of Timber because... Who is he going to get past in a starting 11? And White? Don't think so. Saliba? Gabriel? Don't think so. So, buddy, go ahead and join us. Arsenal, I will happily take Timber. For me personally, this wasn't a player that I was even thinking about. But now, I love this transfer. And this is something that the game should be doing way more often, man. Swap deals can be so much fun. Like, let me know in the comments down below what was, like, the best swap deal that has been offered to you in your career mode. Let me know, guys. But market value, 53 million plus 11 million on top. Not too shabby. I'm pretty happy with it, even though it does say an F. But Timber comes in now to play as the right-sided centre-back. O'Brien goes over to the left. He is six foot six. Timber, obviously, only five foot ten. So, quite a nice pairing of basically, like, we basically have Harry Maguire and Lisandro Martinez here. So, that's what we're doing, but hopefully better. Oh, and I should explain I did sell on Tarkowski, 14 million. At the age of 32, he has gone to Spurs. And that leaves us now with a budget of over 110 million. We need to go in. To be able to win multiple trophies, we obviously have to go ahead and sign players as backups. And we have no center backs. Saba Sazonov, 25 million I paid for this lad. He's a giant. I believe he's six foot four. He is now joining our team as a backup center back. He comes in with that 78 rating, which is pretty much perfect. And Cermiti, very talented player still. He now will be my backup striker, Cavill Lewin. I think it's time to move you on because Broja has taken over and I don't see you winning that battle. So we might as well have Cermiti as the backup, but I still need a couple more here. And I'm not done yet with the centre-back position. I am going for Omari, another centre-back joining us from the French League like Jake O'Brien. Omari is, or at least was, a very talented player at one point in his career. I don't know what he's up to these days, but he's going to be joining us right here with a 78 rating. The next guy wouldn't be too suited for the centre-back position. It's a man that is five foot five, a man that moved over to Bayern Munich and things didn't really work out, initially at least. Brian Zaragoza. Before he moved to Bayern, he actually looked like a special player. Now he's back in Spain and he is going to be the perfect backup to Concesal because he's also a little man, five foot six. So we are bringing in Zaragoza as an offensive backup into our team. 78 rated just like the other lads. And I want you guys to actually go down into the comments down below and say, hey, wow, Johnny is actually buying backups. GG. Because you are always on my case when I don't. So I really hope 
will be nice to me this time. And the last signing is a man that can apparently play right back and left back, which I didn't know. I thought he was only a right back. It is a former West Ham player. Ben Johnson is joining us right now at Everton for 21 million. That was his release clause. I'm fine with it. And this little man named John has to leave for that. Johnson comes in with a 77 rating. And now I truly believe our bench is fully ready for this season. And so is our starting 11. I've made some tough decisions. Branthwaite gone, Calvert-Lewin left, and now Everton in second place. Look at that. Now we can start, start signing some big names because now they know we are a Champions League club. And this is where the fun could be starting, my friends. Broja, 85 rated at this stage, by the way. Only 24 years old. Lindstrom on an 85, 26. Concesao, 85. This man, Irog Bunam, with the 82. Gomez, 85. McNeil, 84. I gotta say, for a left midfielder, even though, yes, McNeil is great and everything, I'm not a fan in FIFA. I'm talking FIFA. I'm not talking real life. I think in real life, he's a hugely impactful player. But in the game itself, 79 pace, man. That's a struggle. But uh, Mikolenko, 85 rated. O'Brien, 82. Timber up to an 85. Patterson, who started off with like a 72, now is on an 83. Pickford is still looking solid at the age of 32. Someone that we possibly will have to upgrade on. Uh, uh, as we are now a Champions League club and the players on the bench look quite solid as well. But as you guys know, I need to win five English trophies and the Champions League at the end. So we better get going with those trophies now. Roja, 18 goals. McNeil, 14 and 11. Gomez, 10 and 2. Lindstrom, 9 and 7. Zaragoza with eight goals off the bench, I assume. Really, really good stuff. But this season again, no trophy in the Premier League. FA Cup, nope. Carabao Cup, maybe? Nope. None of that has happened yet. You've let him go to Chelsea? Really? Well, Jaden Sancho, it is time for you to come to a club where you actually won't have to compete with 50,000 people in your position. Let's bring you over to Everton now that we are a Champions League club. This is where you belong. So Dwight McNeil is gone. I'm sorry. I'm bringing in Jaden Sancho. He's not necessarily faster, I'll tell you that much, but he is someone that can skill past people for fun. And that is why I wanted him in this team. 86 rated right now. I think he only has like plus two pace over Dwight McNeil, but I know for a fact he feels 10 times better in game. He is now coming in. Another Englishman, which a lot of people have been saying in the comments, I should be bringing in more players from the country of the teams I'm rebuilding. So Sancho, Vanessa, Technical, Flair, Trickster, Trivella, a big signing for a Champions League club. And we all know how well he has done for Dortmund in the Champions League run last time, so surely he will help us too. And look, Broja is nice, but Sheshko is better. Sheshko is now the new striker at Everton, a true target man type striker who also is actually quite good on the ball. Him and Openda are a great partnership at Leipzig, and now he's going to be the focal point of our team. He's going to walk straight in there with that 86 rating, tons of pace, great shooting, great dribbling, incredible physicality, six foot five, power shot, technical flair. That's, I'm telling you. He's going to tear it up for us. Now, these are true high-level transfers for Everton. Now we need to stay up there in the Champions League and start winning trophies. The season is done and we actually did somewhat all right. We made it up into the quarterfinals of Champions League football, getting kicked out by AC Milan. In the Premier League, yes, City is still winning, but it's only a six-point gap at this stage, but... Here we go. Carabao Cup has been won. First trophy for Everton. But let's not finish there. It is the FA Cup as well, which we won against Manchester City. That is the second trophy. Three to go. Lads, we're doing a great job here. And I honestly think our team is a special one at this stage. We have Sheshko on an 88, Lindstrom 87, a true career revival. We have Sancho on an 88, Gomez and also the kid, the youngster is now up to an 87. Concesao 87, Patterson, Timber, O'Brien, Mikolenko, all becoming world-class level players. 
The only thing is, Pickford is 33. He's up to an 85. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like if we sign a top class like goalkeeper that is 87, 88 rated, this team wins everything. That's all I'm going to say. Someone left our bench here, though. What? Who, who is gone? I don't know who that might be. Hold on a second. Something happened right there. Squad hub real quick. Stats. Cheshko. There we go. Zaragoza. Impressive. He is playing over Concesao. Lindstrom doing really well. Sancho as well in his first season. Our CDM is getting goals. Plus five in growth. I brought in all the coaches for the midfielders now so that they grow nicely. But who left our team? I am missing someone. It is Harrison leaving on a free transfer. That's okay for me. But that's it. Okay. Nothing missed here. For the goalkeeper position, it was clear to me. I had to bring bring in Gregor Kobel. His contract was running out. He's world class. He's 90 rated. It only made sense. And he only cost me 70 mil because his contract was running out. So with Kobel in place, we have finished second to Sporting out of all teams in the Champions League group stages. Went through against the likes of Leverkusen 2-0. Quarterfinals, we beat Frankfurt. Semi-finals... He beat Inter. But look at who is still there. Sporting. So, in the finale, it will be Everton against Sporting, which is something that excites me massively. I love it when there are teams that I'm not expecting to be here. And lads, let's go through the trophy cabinet. We have picked up two. Yes, two trophies last season. Carabao Cup, FA Cup. This season, Community Shield, Everton. Premier League, Everton. Only two points ahead of Manchester United. FA Cup, Everton. Carabao Cup, yes, Everton again. So it's six trophies for Everton so far. If we leave out the Community Shield, that's still five. So this means we are at the end of the road. And this is the squad. Cesco on a 90 rating. Lindström, 91. Irok Bunam is the captain now. Yes, I have decided so. Concesao, 89. Gomez, 89. Sancho, 90. Mikolenko, 89. O'Brien as well looking solid. Timba right there with Patterson still in the squad. And we have Kobe becoming a part of this team as well. Zaragoza, 88 rated on the bench. Quite impressive. Mangala, Cermiti, all these guys quite helpful. And I actually kept Pickford. He has gone up to an 88. What the hell? Okay, relax, buddy. You're 34. I didn't think he would actually go up, but stats-wise, Jeshko, 37 and 3. Incredible. Sancho, 22 and 16. Show them haters. Then we have Zaragoza with 20 and 7. Lindstrom, 14 and 11. Gomez, 10 and 10. Concesao, 9 and 5. Our captain with 10 goal contributions. This team is so ready for this matchup, but I don't know if I am. Who do you have? Jokeres is still around. I can't believe no one has bought this guy yet. Pedro Gonzalez on the left. Patavu back in the sporting squad. Gustavo Sa, Morita. Okay, that midfield doesn't necessarily scare me. Sa is a talented player though. Chilwell. Okay. Barros. Probably a regen. Tapsoba. San Juist. Okay, we have some fast center backs. Presneda at right back. And Restes in goal. Five at the back. Two in the middle. The ideal way for us to beat this team is to get around Gustavo Sa and Morita as fast as possible. Quick passing play will make the difference today. I think last time around, I actually lost the Champions League final, did I? I can't remember, but I might have. So let's be wary of that result and let's perform better this time around. Five English trophies picked up, adding on top of the nine and five that Everton already had. But let's see if this team can pick up a European trophy. Everton actually does have a European trophy. It is the European Cup Winners Cup. Not the one where the league title winners played against each other, but the cup winners. O'Brien is a big boy, man. I love that. Timber. There he is. Our CDM. Irog Bunam sprinting forward. Look at him. Our captain making his way. Concesal. Little man. Bring the cross to the big man. Sheshko gets ahead on it. Whoa. This man is dribbling past me with ease. Everton, I need someone to step up right here. It's going to be O'Brien. It could have been a penalty, but it's fine. Sheshko, make that sprint. I'll find you, buddy. Go on, Sheshko. Beautiful pass into him. 
Oh, mate, the ball is too far ahead. Lovely dribbling. He gets past one. Still keeps going. Down the right we go into Concesal. Back into Sancho. Into Sheshko. Beautiful passing play. And at the end, they do manage to put someone in between us and the goal. But at least we are doing the right thing so far. And look at that. What a steal from Patterson. Sheshko onto his left foot. Shoot, buddy. On target, please. Mikolenko. Sancho. Love that. Keep it up, Sancho. Look for Mikolenko again. Mikolenko. Keep going. Whip that cross in towards Lindström. Lindström. I didn't think he would be the one to head the ball into the back of the net. I thought that was Sheshko's job, but no. Jesper Lindström, the former Eintracht Frankfurt beast, has now scored for Everton. We trusted in him. We kept him in the squad. And it has now paid off Mikolenko, the original, to Lindström, another potential original of Everton. Let's go. Let's look for the big man now. Concesar whips the cross in right on top of Sheshko's head. <laughs> Who would have thought that I will be winning this game with crossing? I thought it was going to be passing play. But no, Sheshko, exactly why I thought he would be perfect for this team. A physical target man up top, like Everton likes to have it, like the likes of Calvert-Lewin and such, you know of it. Sheshko, in between four people. It's no issue. He is six foot five. Angel. Go on, Angel. Show me what type of heavenly football you can play. Mikolenko. Sancho. Off we go. Inside the box. Jaden Sancho. Finish it. And make it 3-0. End this. Mate, our captain is a beast. And he could be getting an assist. And he will. Hey, we trusted him as a 69 rated player. Hiro Bunam, I think you are incredible. Sheshko, thanks for that moment. I really appreciate it. Quality finish. That man, Hiro Bunam, needs to lift that trophy now. And there it is. Everton Football Club back on top. And that man is going to lift the trophy, as I said before. Mate, I will forever remember your name as the one that I probably mispronounced 50,000 times. But... It was all worth it. You got to lift the Champions League trophy and you got yourself an assist in the finale as well. This Everton team was a really fun one to play with. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, make sure to check out my Everton career mode series that has just started on Johnny Sports 2. Same name as this channel, just a two at the end. I'll see you there. Take care and peace.